Good morning. It's lovely to see you inside, out of the rain. But it's so beautiful outside. So I hope you see the photographs I took at the top of the hill 10 minutes ago because, oh, it's so beautiful. You know, there's no wind. There's mist. I mean, not mist, not proper mist, but there are clouds kind of wreathing the, um, like, you know, like flower gardens on the hills and there's reflections on the harbour and it's just so beautiful. My good morning. So let me get into the rocks because we're inside with the rocks. And um, first, first up, it's like a show. Well, it is, I suppose. But we have a little piece of flint, which you can't really see very well. Good morning, Robin. There you go. That's better. You can see that it is a mixture of brown and black. Um, and it was given to me by somebody who originally came from the States. Good morning, Sang Marie. It is lovely to see you. I know it's late at night where you are, but it's gorgeous to see you. So this is flint, um, and it's probably been started, you know, being chipped into an arrowhead by somebody, because you can see there's, you know, there's marks there, um, but then it was discarded for whatever reason. So, you know, indigenous American artifact of a sort. So there it is, and I actually really love this deep caramel brown. I'm going to try and catch it properly. It's a bit hard. I can see it really well because I've got the light on it here. There you go. Now you can see the colour. It's really rich. Beautiful. So, um, other small and wonderful things. This is a little piece of raw Labradorite. And there you go. You can see it's got a bit of a blue flash going on. Um, yeah, today is a day of small and wonderful things that are easy to look over for something more spectacular. Um, you know, Labradorite can be a very ordinary looking stone um, until you catch the light on it. And, you know, it's a bit like us. We can be very ordinary until we just start to shine. So there you go. It's just a little wee piece of raw Labradorite, but, you know, there it is, sparkling. Something else that sparkles is this little piece of tiger eye. There, yeah, now you can really see its bands. That's, that's better. So it's about where the light is and catching it. It's been tumbled. Morning, Andrew. Lovely to see you. Um, and there it is. And, you know, it looks so ordinary and dark brown. But when you catch the light on it, suddenly it's small and fabulous. So sometimes I've felt like that myself, you know. Small and, and easy to overlook. But really, there is a shine and a sparkle to each small piece of us. That is only ours. This little stone is unique to itself. There's nothing else quite like it. So good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you jumping on. Yay, we're all together. Um, and last but not least, something slightly larger. This little piece, little piece, this is from the Brandberg Mountains in South Africa. And it is quartz. And it's got little dots in it. Um, it's called Harlequin Quartz. Oh, look, you can see. See, that one's red. And these ones are black. It's got red and black dots in it. And so, you know, it's a bit like a harlequin suit. It's multicolored. It's got the skeletal formations going on inside. So it's pretty fabulous. Especially when I've got the artificial light coming down from on top, you know. So and it's very transparent. It's very beautiful. Um, and I, it just said, show me off today. Oh, look at all those dots there. So you can see right through it. Um... And it's a fabulous wee thing. This one was given to me by my friend Jenny as well. She gave me the choice of two and was like, oh, how can I possibly choose? Because the other one had that beautiful purple in the middle of it. It was a Brandberg Amethyst. Good morning, Amy. And Abigail, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's lovely to see you. So these are our rocks. Oh, this really is very pretty. Yeah, you can see the, the skeletal part is there. It's very clear and then it's clear above it. So, all right, rocks. Now, today, I want to talk about fighting for what we deserve and why that's not necessarily the most efficient way to get what we deserve. Um, and it's a challenge, you know. Julian, oh my goodness, hello, we're all together today. Um, how do you do this without doing it? Because here's the thing, if you are fighting for something, if you are struggling for something, if you are looking for something, if you are chasing for something, if you are going after something, Tom, good morning, Carolina, hello, we're all together today, it's so cool, um, then you don't have it. 
right? You don't have it if you're fighting for it. Now, this might seem like a really, yeah, okay, no shit, Sherlock. What are you telling me this for? But the more you fight for something or look for it or chase it or try to have it or say, oh, I really want that, the more you are convincing yourself and the universe at large that you don't have it. You are putting yourself in polarity. It's perfect timing, Abigail. I know that I'll hear from you. Bless you. Big love. Enjoy the call. Um, so if you are in the place of saying, I want that, I need it, I have to chase it, I have to go after it hard, then you are affirming the fact that you don't have it. And because remember how you think, and what you do and how you feel creates your reality. That's it. That's the truth I learned from my inspiration, Dr. Joe Dispenza. How you think, of course, creates chemistry, which creates how you feel. That's fact. That's science. And so if I deserve the highest quality of life, the highest quality of whatever, I better think and feel the highest quality of thoughts and emotions. Period. If I love myself. And thinking and feeling in the state of, I have to struggle for this, I have to effort for this, I have to try for this, I have to be a warrior for this. Oh my God, isn't there such a thing about, you know, we have to fight through and overcome and be a warrior. That to me is not a high quality thought and a high quality feeling because that is a stressful thought and feeling that I don't wish to inhabit. And you may say, but you know, how the hell am I going to get what I want if I don't fight for it? And there's a balance point here, which I'm going to try to explain as we go along, right? But the, the primary thing I want to state first is that as long as we are in stress, as long as we are in effort, and as long as we are saying that thing is over there and I have to fight to, from here where I am to where I want to be to get there, we are saying we don't have it and we're putting ourselves apart from it. And, you know, whether you're talking about wanting to achieve a goal in business or to find a relationship or get healthy or whatever it is, as long as you are saying, I don't have it, that is your truth. As long as you are saying, I've got to fight to get to it, you are saying there are things you've got to fight through to get to it, right? And at a fundamental quantum physics, 5D and quantum entanglement, what you think and how you feel and what you do creates your life level, that probably isn't what you want. It just isn't. <laughs> so, that's... Um, so that's the quantum thing. And even, you know, in so-called real life, right? If you are approaching your business challenge, let's say, from a point of view of, I have to fight through this. Um, this is a struggle. There are lots of competitors. There's not enough. You know, all of those thoughts that tend to come... When you're thinking, I have to fight through this. Well, what is it you're fighting through? There's not enough. There's competition. I don't know how. I don't have the tools. I don't have a big enough mailing list. I don't have enough money. Now, all of those things that very reasonably and justifiably jump up in your head and say, but these are the reasons why you don't have it. If you are thinking like that, then the action you take is going to be based upon that. Which, again, is terribly logical. Well, I don't have enough money and I don't have enough customers and I don't, you know... But you are taking the action in designing your future and making plans from the mindset of, well, well, I don't have enough money, so I have to do this and I have to do that. And I have to run around and find people. You know, that whole mindset becomes the way you do things. And so because you are doing things from that state of being, then it's like your results are going to be related to the place where you started from. Um, and they probably, speaking from experience, won't change a hell of a lot. Truly. And you know, I keep saying this because I just read from Dr. Joe last night again. It was Einstein who famously said, and I can never quite remember it properly, um, but the gist of it is you can't solve a problem if you keep thinking about it the same way you've always been thinking about it. You've got to get to a higher level of awareness or consciousness or thinking about itness 
then, then, the, then the thinking aboutness and consciousness and awareness that created the problem in the first place. So as long as you're thinking about it and trying and, you know, fighting through, you're going to keep doing that. You're just going to keep creating that. And remember, physiologically, it's not good for you either. Your body doesn't care whether the stress you're in is about achieving your dreams or because somebody, you know, attacked you. To the body, it's the same. The stress isn't particularly good for us. Daim, good morning. Um, that's just it. The body doesn't care what you're getting stressed about. As far as the body's concerned, okay, we need stress hormones. We're going to downregulate the immune system. We're going to upregulate it for a little while, and then we're going to turn it down. Um, we're not going to be able to fix things in the body that need healing. We can't digest your food. We can't think. We're not open to new ideas. All of that stuff goes on when you're in stress. So if you are busting your ass, being stressed, trying to create a solution to a problem, all of that's going on. doesn't matter if the problem you're trying to solve is you're trying to solve it for a really good reason or not. It just screws you, basically. <laughs> Physically, it screws you. And, and neurologically, you're not open to new inspirations and opportunities. You, you will go straight past things that could actually help you. Because you're in survival and you're in stress. And when you're in survival and stress, you are not open to new ideas. All you want to do is know how to get away from the lion that's chasing you. That's just, that's just what is going on in your brain and your body. So, here's what I am practicing and doing all the time. Because this is how I am choosing to create my life. Because all of that other stuff that I did for so long did not work for me. And every time I find my mind going... Trying to go back and say, oh, I need to, I'm, and it's like, I'm in touch enough with the wisdom of my heart now that I know when something doesn't fit and when I am not going to go off down that road again. I, it's, so it's just, no, 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 no. And occasionally a little piece of the puzzle will drop down. I think, yeah, that fits. But nothing that I can take action on. It's just, oh, okay, that's one piece of what my future is. Um, and that's okay. I'm learning to rest with that. But a big piece of the reason why I'm learning to rest with that is because I'm becoming the person who is living the life that I dream of and desire to create. I'm becoming that person. The person who has it now. Now this is much, much more profound than positive affirmations and positive thinking. Positive affirmation, positive thinking, all very good. But that's what you do with your conscious mind. And your conscious mind is 5% of what is going on in any one moment in your day. Well, what's the other 95%? The 95% is the part that keeps you breathing. The part that means you know how to sit up and listen to me. The part that knows how to hold the cell phone and operate it. The part that walks. The part that runs the automatic programs that knows how to make a cup of coffee and go to bed and get up and get dressed and... All of those things, habitual programs, you don't even think about. And you habitually feel certain ways too. And you habitually think certain thoughts about who you are and how your life is. Starting to see the connection. All of that, so much of that is automatic. Um, and, and, you know, there's a deeply automatic, unconscious program in me that has been running my entire life that I have not been able to see until very recently. Um, and I'm moving through it at the moment in my meditation work because the meditation work deals with the 95%. And this one was about 99% in the 95. Could barely see it. it. Just had these horrible feelings that would come up. I didn't even understand what that all was. And it was the most... It, finally, I recognized it last week. You know, series of events... The stuff comes up and I think, oh God, it's this again. This is like trauma. What the hell is it? And I finally connected with what the hell it is. Um, this is the most appalling sense of overwhelming, just, oh God, I'm slime. Let me hide in the dirt and just, oh. And the sense that every person I could ever think of was kind of turning around and looking at me like, oh, yay. You know, no reason for this to be a thing, but oh my God, it's been overwhelming and powerful and painful and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Do you think that with that sitting in my 
unconsciously driving me, running me, putting up thoughts that I didn't even recognize that just went straight to the oh feeling inside me. Do you think that with that going on, I can experience the life of my dreams? No, it's not a reason to match. So I have to become the person who does not feel like I want to disappear into the dirt. I have to become the person who feels worthy of the life that I desire to live. Which is a truly noble and worthy life, let me tell you. But until I'm a resonant match for that life, until I'm in a state of havingness and of beingness, of the 95% of me that I don't think about just being that person who is overwhelmingly worthy of that life. It can't find me. It's not even, I'm not being punished by the universe saying, no, no, you can't have this. We hate you. You have to suffer. No. Until I am that person, it can't get to me. And I really understand this now. I just, because I feel it, I understand it, and I understand the change that's going on there in me at the moment. Like, literally, in this moment. Um, so we have to start to imagine, and this is where, you know, this, this has been going on for months, really. I understand this. I've been working with, with becoming deeply and powerfully and immensely and automatically and unconsciously worthy, really, since the beginning of this year. Um, and I've made big strides, you know, because I've come up against myself and I'm overcoming myself. Um... To become the person, you know, like we talked about yesterday, flip-flopping from one to two. For me, my one is complete unworthiness. My two is complete worthiness. I am so worthy of this life that I desire to live. And there's a flip-flop, and it takes time. But you get to the point, and it takes time. Do you get it? It takes time and determination and application where step by step, moment by moment, by layer, by deeper, by everything else, Jocelyn, it's you! It becomes my habitual, unconscious way of being to feel so deeply worthy that no person, no situation, no nothing can bump me out of that state of being. Or if they do, because that's going to happen, that I can get myself back there really easily. So, oh, yeah, right, okay. It's, it's habitual, it's normal. I just know how to be this way. Now, when I'm in that state of being, I am still going to work my ass off to create what I desire to create. Why? Because I have a passion for it, and I'm in alignment with it, and I'm worthy of it. I'm going to do that. Relaxing into the havingness of what I desire is not going to slow me down. So, you know, we have this idea that if we back off and stop fighting for what we want, that we're going to just get slack and not try. No. It, it, I mean, it's not about motivation. It takes tremendous determination and, and motivation for me to overcome myself. So... It's about shifting the effort out of this polarity and that fighting and I gotta and overcome all this stuff to hang on. The only thing I've got to overcome is me. And I can't do that by fighting myself. I've got to love myself enough to make the changes to become this person who is living this life. Therefore I'm sending the right kind of information to the unified field, to the universe, the source, you know, law of attraction, tra la la, and it can find me. And that means I don't have to chase it, I don't have to struggle, I don't have to try, I don't have to bust my ass. I just have to continue being this person. And of course, you say, well, I'm being this person and it's not here yet. The first statement's great, I'm being this person. The second statement is a statement of separateness. It's, as soon as you are looking for it, as soon as you're saying, where is it? You put yourself apart from it again. That's not the state of having this. The state of havingness takes tremendous determination to continue to be in the state of, oh, I'm so grateful it's here. I'm so grateful I'm having the impact I desire. I'm so grateful I'm whole. I'm so grateful I'm loved. I'm so grateful I'm free 
to do that and yeah to quit fighting every problem in the outside world oh my god um yeah we, we've just got to take it all back and overcome ourselves and then your actions are different and you realize that anything that puts you into polarity is not loving to you and it reinforces the very thing that you want to change in the world and that's a big one for those of us who care about stuff that's going on out there that we think is crap it's like oh you mean it's not up to me to solve that no it's up to me to change myself and get out of polarity because being in resistance and resist and fighting in polarity is not loving to me because it hurts my body and it puts me in survival and it stops me from receiving the very thing that I desire. It stops me from becoming and being the very thing that I desire in the world because of course that's the way that, you know, be the change that you want to see in the world. It doesn't mean fixing anybody else or anything else and it's a fine line because, you know, it's something we have to take action. To see you um so there is a balancing point i haven't really talked about that you know we can't just sit on our ass we can't just do the thing oh you just great i feel wonderful we've got to take action but it has to be action from the place of i am this and i'm living this and i'm being this and in spite of everything else sometimes it really is despite everything else you just have to be able to stay in that space of i can't see it and it doesn't matter i am this and when you can sustain that and do it and be it and you stop even looking for the thing because you really feel like you have it then it can come to you you don't need it but it comes to you and you love it and you grow it and you you know i'm excited now i can do this thing i wanted to do that's how it works so yeehaw i am passionate about this because i'm living it um mostly inside me but I get little hints, I get little nudges and winks from the universe that tell me, yeah, you're doing good. Don't go back to the old way. Stop trying. Just be. And do the work. To become that person. And act and live and breathe like that person. Most of all, being loving to you. That means not fighting. Beings in stress. Shafi, you got to open your focus and get centred. That's another question. Maybe we'll talk about that another day. It's lovely to see you. Big love. I'm just in time to say bye-bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, lots of love.